Okay, in this lesson, we're going to cover a lot of tags. So we're going to cover headings, paragraphs, bold, italic, link tags, lists, and images. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump into it. And we've already shown you what an H1 looks like. So we had an H1, and this is typically used for a title or a headline. So if you have a post, this would probably be like your post title would be a heading one tag. Let's say title here. And what we can do is we have H1 all the way through H6. So let me go ahead and just duplicate those. And we can just run H2, H3, 4, 5, and 6. And you'll see whenever we show this in the browser, each heading gets smaller and it's essentially set up like a glossary. So if H1 is your most important, then H2 would be like your subtitle. And then you have another heading and so on. So you can use them kind of in precedence. Typically, I've only used H1 through maybe even H3, but most common is going to be H1 and H2. So if we save this and we open it up, you can see that we have our H1, H2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we have our paragraph right here. So how about I organize my windows so that way we could see both screens at the same time. Okay, so we have our headings and then we also have our paragraph. And paragraph is simply just a piece of text that you would want to display like your article content or any other kind of paragraph. I'm, you know, I guess I don't really have to explain what a paragraph is, but uh, that was my best attempt. Kind of a fail, but we'll go with it. <laughs> okay, so we have our H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we have our paragraph tag. And I kind of wanted to let you know that these are all called block elements. So are there, there are two different kinds of elements, which is inline and block elements. And all you really need to know is that block elements will create a new line as opposed to floating right next to each other. So if it's inline, it's going to float. Uh, if it is a block element, it's going to stack on top of each other. So this might be a little bit more clear. If I were to add a few lines, I could probably add some lore myths in here, but Let's go ahead and add all that. You can see that if we were to duplicate this paragraph, instead of it continuing on the same line, it's actually going to create a new line because a paragraph is considered a block element. So let me show you a few examples of some inline elements. So let's create another paragraph and just say, hello there from the wonderful world of HTML. So there is a tag, which is the bold tag or the B tag. So we can say that we want world to be bold. And this bold tag is going to be an inline element. So if we reload, you can now see that this is actually inline. It didn't create a new line break. So this is an inline element instead of a block element. Another one that we have is italic. So we could say hello there. We could add italic to there. And if we reload, you can see that now that is italic and it is all inline. So if we wanted to, we could always make those block elements as opposed to inline. So each of these elements have their own styles just by default. This is the styles that the browser has created for like our H1 and our paragraph. And if I were to go into my developer tools, you can see that there are a set of predefined styles. And whenever you see this user agent style sheet, that just means that this is the browser default styles. So you can see here that we have display block and then we have some margin as well. So let's go ahead and select our world bold. And what if we set this to display block? You can see after we set that, it drops to a new line. So that's all you need to remember with inline and block elements is that block elements will create a new line in line will do exactly as it says it will stay in line with the content okay so we have our paragraph we then have some inline elements right here let's go ahead and talk about links so links are used to direct a user from your web page to another web page either on your same site or somewhere else so we can create a link by adding the a tag and then we also need to specify an attribute inside of our a link, which is called href. And the href is where the user is going to be navigated to when they click on that link. So for instance, we could say that we want this to go to google.com. And we'll just make the content say click here. 
So if I reload that, and sure enough, if we click this link, we then go to google.com. So then we can add a different attribute if we want the user to open up a new tab when they click on that link. And we can call this target equals underscore blank. And if we reload this and click here, you can see that it opens up a new tab and goes to that link. So typically, if you have links that are navigating away from your site, you open it in a new tab, but it will stay in the same tab if it's someplace that you're navigating to on your own site. Okay, so we have our headings, we have paragraphs, we have links. What about lists? What if we wanted to create a list? Well, there are two different types of lists, which are unordered lists and ordered lists. So let's go ahead and just show you the difference between the two. So an unordered list, we'll use UL for unordered list. And inside of this element, we will have list items, which we will start off with LI, and then we will put the content inside. So let's say that we have a grocery list and we have milk. I'll say eggs and cheese. Okay, so if we save that and we reload, you can see that we get these bullet points of milk, eggs, and cheese. So this is an unordered list, and we could always change the styles if we don't like this disc right here. There's a few different styles that we can do to remove that and add our own, but uh, we will cover styling these elements in a few more videos. So let's jump over to an ordered list. So what we could do is we could duplicate this and instead of a UL, we can say OL for ordered list. And we save that and reload. And what do you know, we get an ordered list. Okay, last up before closing out this video, I want to show you how to add an image tag and then how to add an image on your web page. Because what would a web page be without a good image of say a silly cat or dog? So let's go ahead and search for an image at images.google.com. How about we do funny cat? Let's see which one. It doesn't matter which one we use. How about you use this guy right here? So I'm going to open this image in a new tab. And I'm just going to copy the URL for this image. And to add an image into our page, we use the IMG element. And the image is a self-closing tag, so we don't need to actually have a closing tag for the image. So we want to say that the source is going to be the URL of the image. So we can paste that in there. So let's save our page and go back here and reload. And you can see, whoa, that image is pretty huge. So what we can do is we can add a few more attributes to our image called width. And how about we set that to 200? And we'll just say height is set, we'll say auto. So it should just automatically scale based on the width. So we reload. And sure enough, we get the image of the cat. And you can see that this image is an inline element as well, because it just showed up inline right here. So if we wanted to, again, we could go in here into our developer tools and say display block, and then it would end up on its own line. So I think that's it for this video. We covered quite a few tags and introduced you to heading tags, paragraph, inline versus block elements, the italic tag, the bold tag, we then showed you how to add links to your page, unordered lists, ordered lists, and of course, images. So these are some of the most common tags that you will be adding to your page. And obviously to make it look quite a bit prettier, we'll be adding some CSS down the road. So in the next lesson, we're going to cover a few more important elements such as divs, tables, and floats.